In this video, I will be providing you with a few different ways you can install plumbing drain, vent, and water supply pipes to where they won't do any damage to the stair stringers or do the least amount of damage to those stair stringers. So number one on the list will be going underneath the stairway that does not have a closet and you can run the pipes without damaging the stringers under those stair stringers like we have done here. And if this area is not going to be accessible, then the pipes can run underneath the stringers anywhere in that area as long as it meets your local plumbing codes. However, today most people want to install a closet. So let's go ahead and install our door here and then take a look at the exact location of that plumbing pipe and see if we can't move it to a better spot to make drywalling the ceiling in our closet a little easier. And even though something like this won't be difficult to install some type of framing that would allow you to drywall around the pipe, it's going to be a little bit better if you can move the pipe closer to the bottom of the stair stringers. And of course that would be if you have a situation like this. Sometimes you're going to need to do a little more planning. Now another thing you can do will be to install a wall in front of the plumbing pipe like we've done here. However, this will be making the closet a little smaller. So if you don't like this idea, what about this idea? Nailing a couple of 2x4s or whatever you need to the wall framing. And you can even use building hardware, maybe some straps or small pieces of plywood or other lumber so that you can attach a 2x4 or a 2x6 and lower the ceiling to make it straight. But let's not do any of this until we check out the next example where we can shape a couple of boards so that we can drywall around the pipe. So here we'd be able to attach the drywall to the bottom of the stringers on both sides and then just simply come up and then cut a piece of drywall for here and then one for over here to eliminate drilling a hole or notching into the stair stringers. And hopefully that makes sense. Now, if you do need to drill through the stair stringers, then I think avoiding this area here will make a little more sense. And I'm not about to suggest you need to avoid drilling holes here at all. If you're going to be using risers that will provide structural support for the center stair stringer and then transfer the structural load to the outer stair stringers that are going to be attached to the wall framing or supported by other types of structural framing. And for those of you who have never built any stairs, trust me, once you start installing the risers and you do have the stringers attached to the framing studs where they can be attached, your stairway is going to get a lot stronger after the risers have been nailed. So let's go ahead and remove the treads so that I can prove my point here a little bit better. So if I use plywood, now OSB works just fine, and I would imagine a 1x8 would work fine here, or even a 2x8. And what the plywood's going to do, basically, is make the center stringer more rigid, because it's going to be transferring some of the load away from the center of the stair stringer and towards the outer part that is fastened to the wall. Now on a wide stairway, this might not work as well, but on a stairway that's less than four foot wide, these risers are really gonna make a big difference. So if you don't install any risers, I would strongly suggest to avoid drilling holes through the stair stringers, unless you relocate the pipe to where it's in what I would consider to be the non-structural section of the stringer. So here we've located the pipe in the center of the riser height so that we could nail the bottom and the top of the riser. And the only problem that I have with the location here is that you could have a section of the stringer actually split here. So this right here would be a weak point on the stringer. And this might not be the best position for our pipe. So you can either lower it like we've done here or move it over to here. And I think this is going to provide us with the best location because we're going to be able to nail the back of the tread as well as not worrying about the front of the stringer splitting off here. And I'm not about to suggest it won't ever split. You won't ever have a problem here because a lot of it's going to depend upon where the knots are located along with what type of lumber and what grade of lumber you're using. And if you notice, I kept the notches or the holes that I'm going to drill 
in the stair stringers out of this section of the stringer. This area here is unaffected by the notches cut out of the stair stringer for the treads and risers, providing us with the area where most of the structural strength is in the stair stringer or in that lumber. And I would also like to point out that I am not a structural engineer. However, I have built a lot of stairs, even though I didn't work on a lot of projects where we had plumbing pipes running through the stair stringers. Here are a few tips for anyone who is going to be building a stair stringer out of wood. And the most important tip is probably going to be to select straight lumber. This is straight lumber in both directions and with as few lumber defects as possible. I would also suggest getting lumber that is a little drier than wetter also because lumber with high contents of moisture can shrink and create problems for your stairway. Next tip would be to avoid having large cracks at the end of the stair stringers. However, keep in mind that some of these cracks will be able to be removed when you lay out your stair stringers. And if you can, avoid using center cut lumber because this lumber can warp and twist and deform into a variety of different directions that might not be good for your stairway as the lumber dries. And here's an example of lumber that's cut a little further away from the center of the tree. You can see the ring growth patterns here and estimate that the center of the tree might be around here somewhere. Next up, try to use number two or better lumber. And when I used to cut a lot of stairs, we used to use select lumber for our stair stringers. So you would have select number one and then number two. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to avoid purchasing lumber if you can with sections missing or sections damaged. And again, these might not be that big of a deal. It's all gonna depend upon how you're going to lay out the stair stringer. So don't avoid purchasing a piece of lumber like this one here. If you can lay the stair stringer out to where this piece right here will get removed. And of course, here's a good example of using lumber that is too dry where this piece actually cracked off while I was cutting it. And this arrow right here is pointing to a nail. You can just barely see where I nailed this piece right here back on. I drove a nail through here and through here. And by now you're probably thinking that it's going to be practically impossible to select a good piece of lumber for your stair stringers. And I couldn't agree more. I've probably cut over 5,000 stair stringers and dealt with a variety of different problems and defects. So all I'm suggesting is that you get the best lumber available in your area you possibly can. And sometimes that isn't going to be easy. And here's an example of a knot that really isn't going to be that big of a deal and probably one that I couldn't cut out. And this shouldn't be that big of a problem as long as I lower my nails when attaching the riser to the stringer and move the nails for the treads over a little bit at the top. And of course you can see here I don't have any knots here. Try to avoid knots in any areas where you need to nail or connect the stringer to a ledger or to the framing sill plates. And this is actually a piece of number one. You can barely see it right here. And the last thing I want to mention while you're laying out your stair stringers is to avoid any large knots in this area here. And if you can imagine, this is a two by 14. I have about seven and a half inches between the back of this cut here and the bottom of the stringer. And on a 2x12, I'm going to have 5.5 inches. A 2x10, I'm going to have 3.5 inches. And if I used a 2x10 here, with 3.5 inch distance between the bottom of the stringer and this notch, then there's a good chance it will break over time. If you do have a situation like that, then try to position that stringer to where it won't be a problem. For example, this stringer here is going to have wall framing studs underneath it. And the stringer at the other end can be attached to the wall framing here. So try to use the best stringers you have in any areas that are going to be unsupported, like the center stringers. And hopefully this makes sense. You're not always going to be able to find good lumber in your area. I have been there too many times and sometimes you got to work with what you have and sometimes you're just simply going to have to go to another lumber yard. And thanks for watching. 
Don't forget to check out some of our other videos on YouTube. And if you can't find the videos on YouTube, make sure that you visit our website to find a complete organized list of all of the videos we've made so far.